Hi all and welcome back to the garage. Unfortunately on this uh, video my microphone actually died so uh, I'm having to do this as a voiceover so you won't hear the soothing sounds of screwdrivers and uh, soldering irons. Anyway this video is about uh, modifying the Garmin um, GPS mount which uh, from the factory from Garmin comes with uh, about 10 pounds worth of cables there are sound cables, there are USB power out, there are the normal power wires, of course, uh, and uh, some other wires, which obviously we won't be using uh, in a normal motorcycle environment. So, starting off, you'll have to open up the, uh, the mount itself. There are seven screws that are opened up with a Torx 6 screwdriver. So just get those uh, seven screws out from the back. Once the uh, last screw is out, you'll be able to carefully pry open the uh, the holder or the mount. Uh, be aware that there is uh, the spring-loaded latch on the top uh, that you'll want to be careful with when you uh, open it up. That's the one. So once you have this open, there are two connectors actually to the circuit board uh, in the mount. The uh, power is the small one, the two-wire one uh, on the side, and then you have the multi-wire connector in the middle, which uh, takes care of all the rest of the, the cables. So what you want to do is just disconnect those from the uh, circuit board. The power is fairly easy. Uh, the other one is quite thin and fragile, so be a bit careful. You can either try with your nail, or you can be careful and use a flat blade screwdriver. Just uh, clip it out. So once that, those are out you can uh, go ahead and put away the uh, front of the mount which which is the part that contains the circuit board. Next up there is a um, sort of potting material uh, silicone gasket thing that uh, covers the inside of the um, the uh, penetration where the, where the cable comes through. Uh, just use a small flat blade screwdriver or similar to uh, go ahead and just try to peel out as much as you can of the potting material. Once you get slightly uh, further in, there is a metal like bar um, that is uh, placed there to hold down the cable. And you can go ahead and pry that out with the uh, flat blade screwdriver and that just pulls straight, straight up from the, um, from the mount. This can be a time-consuming task. Just uh, take your time and be careful and pry everything out of there. So this is the metal bar coming out. Just pry that out with the screwdriver. And then you can pick it out with your fingers. So once that's done, just continue peeling out the rest of the potting material or the silicone or whatever it is. And then you can start extracting the cables. Start with the power cable, which uh, will come out quite easily. And then you can bend down the multi-wire connector uh, onto itself to make it as flat as possible. And then just peel that out there as well. It's a bit of a tight squeeze, but uh, it'll come out eventually. You can, of course, cut these, but then you won't be able to reverse this process if you, for some odd reason, ever should want to do that. So that's the cables out from the, uh, the mount, so all those cables can just go away. If you have any residue of the silicone gasket, go ahead and peel that out. Next up, you'll need a uh, connector. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, it's a fairly standard connector in the RC community and everything, so it shouldn't be too hard to get. And um, also have uh, one of those uh, flexible glands to put on the uh, on the cable. So in order to uh, 
get the gland onto the cable. I have a five millimeter, uh, very flexible silicone cable here uh, with two uh, wires on the side. Uh, I use a bit of silicone spray just to lube it up to, to get the gland to mount over it. And then just pull that through. It's a really tight squeeze that's uh, fairly weatherproof as well. So once that's done, you can go ahead and um, just measure up how long the wires need to be for the uh, power connector. So around there, doesn't really matter that much, but you'll have to stow away the rest of the wire inside once you put, uh, put everything back together. So go ahead and just cut off the um, female part of the uh, connector which we will not be using and then go ahead and strip the wires back in order to uh, connect those to the ones in the uh, in the five millimeter cable which we will connect up to the power supply Once that's done, I usually cut off a bit of the uh, cable that I had filled up with silicone spray and uh, used the pliers to get through and everything. So just cut part of that and then uh, strip back the outer insulation and also strip back the inner insulation of the wires. And hook everything up uh, to a helping hand in order to solder the uh, wires together. Put some shrink tube on them just to cover it up. heat up the shrink tube. So that's the positive wire all uh, soldered up and then the negative. So once that's done, you can measure up and just see that the length of the cable into the connector is okay. Pull back the uh, cable gland and feed the wire through the uh, opening in the, in the garment mounts. Get the inner part of the gland through the opening. There is a bit of extra wire there, but that will curl up fine uh, on top of the circuit board. So actually this mount, I'm, uh, this is my traveling mount, which I will be connecting straight to the 12 volt uh, adapter in order to use it on rental bikes and stuff. On my own um, personal mount that I use on my bike, I have the uh, same solution, but that's connected up to a uh, HMO90 four pin connector uh, which is connected into the uh, power outlet under the uh, front cover of the Africa Twin. Doesn't really matter as long as you get power in there. Now that I'm connecting this onto a um, 12 volt uh, power adapter um, I'm gonna also install a fuse just to make sure that we don't fry anything. 
So pulling off uh, quite a bit of the outer insulation in order to get the fuse in line and get the uh, negative cable to be negative wire to be as long as the uh, as the positive one with the fuse on. Twist those together and then uh, solder those up as well. It's time to open up the uh, power adapter. This is a standard one with the tip that makes it uh, compatible. You can uh, remove the tip and make it compatible with the smaller power outlets that are used on BMWs and stuff. This is just a regular, you can get that at any hardware shop basically. So inside there is a uh, positive and a negative connector that is uh, just to screw, in, to screw it on with the bolts. The extra wire thing in there is just a um, LED uh, that um, lights up when it's connected to power. That's the one. So connecting up both the wires up there. Actually the wires here were kind of short so the I ended up having the fuse just outside the um, plastic cover. It's not ideal, but uh, it doesn't really matter. I use this like once or twice a year anyway, so it's okay. And that's why we have electrical tape. We can cover up every minor mistake like that. So everything uh, put together there, let's now uh, <laughs> compare that to the original cable chaos from Garmin, it's obvious way we want to do this. So just to make sure before we hook everything up, we do a continuity check of the um, connector. Just to see that we have connection on the positive, and that's okay and the negative and there is no flow over to the positive there and that's okay next up i uh, use some silicone gasket um, stuff that'll uh, function as a potting material for the um, connection just to make sure that it's uh, weatherproof like a liquid gasket or whatever it's called. We put that in the small compartment just inside where it was originally. And then you can uh, hook up the power to the circuit board and get the, uh, the spring and the, uh, the disconnecting uh, latch. Get that inserted into the uh, rear part of the, of the mount. Right now the gasket is still wet, but uh, as long as I leave it uh, in this orientation, it will dry up fine without uh, hitting the uh, circuit board and everything. So clipping that back together, it's just a matter of uh, reinserting the uh, seven torque screws on the back. Once you get the last one in, you're all done. So that's the uh, Garmin modification. I hope that uh, helps someone, and I'll uh, hope to see you on the, on the next video. Take care.